Hello everyone, News Reviews and More here, and I hope you guys all enjoyed your weekend, as I enjoyed mine. I went to Locals a couple times and um, started keeping up to date with YCS Toronto. Um, YCS Toronto was a big change in the meta over the weekend. Um, I want to talk about that right now, and I'm not really going to talk about the event in general, but I'm going to talk about the decks and the meta changing. Um, the meta hasn't really established for the format yet. Uh, of course we have Wynups being the number one deck and the Grand Soil deck being wanted to make, people want to make that deck, and see how good it does. Um, I believe that that deck is going to do good for the first couple weeks, the Grand Soil one, and after that it's going to kind of just get unpopular, um, as much as most decks that try to, most creative decks do, which is kind of a sad thing. Um, Windup's going to be very cheap, under $200, like I've said in other videos. The top decks right now are under $200, easily. Um, the only thing that's kind of expensive in the deck now is Shockmaster, which is pretty much hype. Shockmaster was a $35 card because it came out in the Shonen Jump promo. Very powerful card. Um, it went up to $80 on Sunday, and now it has dropped to $70. I believe it's going to drop more from there because of just hype. Hype, 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 hype. People aren't really looking for the card, sure, but um, it's just because of hype and the prices rise, and that's so on. And yeah, so um, I also want to talk about price... Um, going up and down with cards. Uh, if you realize that the Karkuri cards all of a sudden jumped up, the, um, the Synchro, I do not know which one it is, the level 7 or level 8, but that card has shot up in price as well, as well as Grand Soil. Grand Soil went around from 12 to t 10 to 12 dollars, and now it's up to a $35 40 card, 40 dollar card. It's funny how things change from the YCSs. Um, make sure to pay attention to that if you see like a deck win with a really unique card, for example, we'll go back to YCS Long Beach and, um, the person who won playing Dark World cited Gel and Duo. Gel and Duo, I can't even pronounce it right, went up to forty dollars. That's ridiculous. A secret rare card that's like, like already has a reprint, I believe. Um, now it does. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like a Spear Reaper, but for fairies, which is kind of interesting. That he ran that, but that was his choice, and he probably made some money off of that because he decided to cite it, and um, he sold them probably after the event. So YCS Toronto went down, we have windups being very popular now. Windups are going to be the number one deck that you're going to see right now. Um, the Grand Soda deck is not going to see as much popularity because the cards are harder to get because they, the set just got released. Uh, we also have reprints for the windups, so that makes it really easy to, to obtain. I also want to talk about what the meta is actually going to be. We're going to see these decks. We're going to see windups, we're going to see heroes, we're going to see Dark World, we're going to see Rabbit, and we're going to see Grand Soil deck. Um, Grand Soil deck is going to be kind of less popular, but the other four are going to be very popular. Um, the best deck I think right now is definitely Windup. You draw two cards, you pretty much win. Whether it can be Magician and Shark, or Shark and Tour Guide and Factory, which is three cards, or Shark and Tour Guide. The combos in that deck are ridiculous. People think the deck is like autopilot. No, it's not. You have to do a lot of thinking. Um, it's very easy thinking once you get a, a hold of it, and after that it gets really, um, before that it gets really tough, but after you start playing with the deck a lot, you get used to it, and you can do crazy combos, and um, it's a very o many OTK factor, as windups were supposed to be. They were originally supposed to do this, um, but then Hunter came into effect, and they didn't care about the combos, so it was just an autopilot deck from there. You bring out the carriers, pop a card, bring out the carriers, pop a card from the hand, discard a card from the hand, and so on. Activate Avarice. Discard their whole hand. Hopefully your opponent doesn't top deck something really good like a JD if, they, if you discarded four Light Swords or something like that. So that's what the deck wasn't meant to do, was to discard cards. Now it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is a very strong deck. And when I was playing um, in the format where Wind of Hunter was legal, uh, I didn't really see anyone actually trying to do combos like that. They were just going for the hand discard. So um, players who used to be wind-up players obviously still know how to use the deck without Hunter, but um, they have a higher advantage than the people who are new to this deck, which is obviously from experience. The deck is so powerful, it's crazy.